Thanks for joining us. It's Monday, September 19th here in Korea, live from Seoul. I'm Han Daen. Leading us off today, the continued diplomatic efforts to curb North Korea's military ambitions. South Korea, the United States, and Japan have vowed to work together on stronger and more comprehensive measures to prevent further North Korean provocations in light of Pyongyang's recent nuclear test. The three countries also discussed new unilateral sanctions on the regime. Our Kwon Zoa at the foreign ministry for us. South Korea, the U.S., and Japan issued their first joint statement on North Korea since 2010 after their meeting Sunday on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly in New York. It said they would closely coordinate policies and expand collaboration in the wake of North Korea's second nuclear test this year and the regime's series of ballistic missile launches. South Korea's Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se emphasized North Korea's nuclear test on September 9th was the strongest ever conducted by the regime. The recent nuclear test by Pyongyang provided ample proof that its nuclear program has neared the tipping point. Moreover, the test frequency was significantly reduced from three years to eight months. Minister Yoon and his U.S. and Japanese counterparts also agreed to work on ensuring that the international community fully implements existing sanctions. They discussed further unilateral and multilateral methods to deter North Korea's nuclear ambitions, in addition to the U.N. Security Council's ongoing talks on a new resolution. The international society is required to initiate a different response. The U.S., South Korea and Japan must be in the driving seat to lead the international debate. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry once again stated that dialogue with North Korea is only viable under the following premise. That we are prepared to sit down with the DPRK, providing North Korea is prepared to talk with the rest of the world, about responsible uh, approaches to the question of nuclear weaponry. The North Korean issue was also the focus of bilateral talks between Minister Yoon and his Japanese counterpart on the same day. South Korea's top diplomat will give a keynote speech at the UN General Assembly, which should include a strong message to North Korea, with the North's Foreign Minister Lee Yong ho in attendance. Kwon so Arirang News. Terror struck the United States over the weekend with three attacks in New York City, New Jersey and Minnesota. Dozens of people were injured, but no one was killed. New York's governor has called the blast an obvious act of terrorism, while authorities continue the search for suspects and their motives. Lee Juan has the latest details. Five people were taken into FBI custody on Sunday night in connection with Saturday's explosion in Manhattan's Chelsea neighborhood. According to ABC News, the FBI's New York field office conducted a traffic stop of a vehicle of interest in the investigation. As many as five people were taken in custody, but no one has been charged with any crime and the investigation is continuing. This comes a day after a bomb exploded in the Manhattan neighborhood of Chelsea in New York City on Saturday, injuring 29 people. Authorities said the blast was caused by an explosive device in or near what appeared to be a dumpster or garbage container. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said the explosion was an intentional act, but insisted there was no specific threat against New York City from any terror organization. We know from everything we've seen so far, that this was an intentional act. I want to reaffirm what I said last night, but again, we do not know the motivation. We do not know the nature of it. That's what we have to do more work on. Shortly after the blast, police sniffer dogs uncovered a second bomb nearby, a pressure cooker with wiring attached. Pressure cookers were used in the two bombs detonated at the Boston Marathon in 2013. The incident in New York was one of three different acts of terror that rocked the country in a single day and came less than a week after the U.S. observed the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. About 11 hours before the bombing in New York, a pipe bomb blew up inside a garbage can in Seaside Park, New Jersey, shortly before a scheduled charity race. Fortunately, no one was wounded. In another incident, a Somali attacker who made references to Allah stabbed and wounded nine people at mall in Minnesota. 
He was later shot dead by an off-duty police officer. The Islamic State group claimed responsibility for the Minnesota attack, but made no similar claims about the incidents in New York and New Jersey. Easy one, Arirang News. Wind advisories have been issued for waters off of Korea's southern coast as Typhoon Malakas makes its way northward toward the Korean Peninsula. The National Weather Agency issued a typhoon warning for waters off of Jeju Island this afternoon, replacing a typhoon watch in effect earlier this morning. Wind advisories are in place for the entire island, while wind and wave advisories are in effect for the island's coastal areas and the South Sea. All ferries departing from Jeju have been canceled, but outbound flights from the island are operating as usual. Typhoon Malakas is traveling north at 22 kilometers per hour, bringing winds of up to 45 meters per second. Samsung Electronics is offering replacements to consumers in Korea who bought the Galaxy Note 7 smartphone, which has been plagued by reports that it's a fire hazard. Starting today, replacements were provided at the retail outlets of Korea's three main telecommunications companies, SK, LG, U Plus, and KT. Customers are advised to check with their service provider before bringing in their phones as the replacements will follow a strict schedule uh, based on the date the devices were activated. The Note 7 was engulfed by controversy after some 90 reported cases of its battery exploding or catching fire while charging. Samsung promptly stopped sales of the Note 7 on September 2nd, and consumer safety authorities in the U.S. issued a formal recall last Last week. That is Adirang News Break for today. Stay tuned for more top stories throughout the day. Thank you for watching.